The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass is now officially completed after two years of content added to the game after their appearances in Mario Kart Tour. And now, we are on the horizon of a new Mario Kart game. Most rumored to be Mario Kart Twitter. Oh, sorry. Mario Kart X. Seriously, the X rebranding is so uncalled for. But I'm still calling it Twitter regardless. That leaves many predictions for possible retro tracks that are going to be in this new Mario Kart game. And I'm about to bring you my predictions for this new installment. I have dug down into the depths of the Super Mario Wiki, went through each game that contained retro tracks, starting from DS and ending in 8 Deluxe, and will be listing off the tracks that I feel like could be good contenders for Mario Kart X, from SNES to Tor, and I'm going to discuss why they are good retro contenders. And side note, I will not be biased about it. Another thing to note is that I'm going to be excluding all Mario Kart 8 slash 8 Deluxe DLC retros that were from previous Mario Kart games, like Yoshi Circuit and this abomination as DS retros and Coconut Mall as a Mario Kart 7 Retro. And let's not forget this Rainbow Road as a Mario Kart 7 Retro. However, I am not excluding the Mario Kart 8 DLC Nitros like Ice Ice Outpost and Super Bell Subway, if I decide to add them as Retros. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and do comment your retro track predictions for Mario Kart X. And without further ado, let's get predicting. For my prediction, I think that Nintendo is going to do 40 tracks total for the new title, with 20 retros, 5 cups, 4 tracks. I say that because I am feeling that Nintendo could be a little bit overwhelmed by how many tracks there are in the Mario Kart series, from SNES to Tour, and there's a, like, a whole lot of tracks they could use. So, I felt like they're going to be adding extra cups, unlike in the other Mario Kart games, except for Super Circuit, which also had five cups for tracks. And let me tell you, predicting these retro tracks was a little bit of a hassle, due to preventing overlaps, as well as keeping things balanced in terms of how many game titles, environmental settings, and the number of tracks that are named after characters. So, instead of the original four Retro Cups, I was thinking that in between Leaf and Lightning, a new cup has been added, and it is the funniest cup I could think of. The Blooper Cup. But now is the time that I'll be listing off the tracks in cup order. For the Shell Cup, I put down 3DS Daisy Hills, Tor Mary Mountain, Wee Toad's Factory, and SNES Bowser Castle 1. 3DS Daisy Hills because it is such a goaded track for it to be the opener of the retros. Literally. Tor Mary Mountain because to me, it is a simple Tor Nitro. Not too complex and not that challenging in my opinion. We Toad's Factory because it is honestly a fan favorite track. Heck, even I love the track. So much that many people wanted this track to be in the Booster Course Pass. However, it never made it to Mario Kart Tour, which in order for a track to be in the Booster Course Pass, it has to be derived in some fashion in Mario Kart Tour. And it left many fans upset so, the fans and myself would love for this track to return in the new game. And SNES Bowser Castle 1 because it is honestly not that complex of a Bowser Castle track. So it makes a fine contender as the last Shell Cup track. Plus, the SNES Bowser Castle tracks, excluding the Booster Course Pass with SNES Bowser Castle 3, haven't made it to a mainline console game. And if the Booster Course Pass gave SNES Bowser Castle 3 anti-gravity, 
I see no reason how anti-gravity can't be used, especially at the straightaways with the ramps. Next up, the banana cup. For this cup, I put down Dia Shroom Ridge, SNES Vanilla Lake 1, Wii U Sweet Sweet Canyon, and N64 Wario Stadium. Dia Shroom Ridge because it has an interesting layout with the traffic, SNES Vanilla Lake 1 because I was predicting this track will be in the booster course pass for the fifth wave until this damn track arrived in Mario Kart Tour in May of 2023 which ended up being a fantastic addition to Wave 6. And even though it was the only retro Bowser castle in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but it's a Nintendo, what are you gonna do about it? We used Sweet Sweet Canyon because my Sweet Tooth picked this track, and N64 Wario Stadium for being the only N64 course to never be remade in a console game nor Mario Kart Tour. For the Leaf Cup, I put down DS Mario Circuit, GBA Sunset Wilds, GCM Mushroom City, and 3DS Shy Guy Bazaar. DS Mario Circuit because it's not that difficult in the original version, and the 8 Deluxe slash Tour version amped it up by adding a 4 section and a wiggler. So I would love for this track to come back, hopefully a little bit more revamped. GBA Sunset Wilds because the track needs a bit of a comeback after its arrival in 8 Deluxe, which caused a lot of outrage for Super Circuit slash Tour fans who love this track, knows the gimmick in Sunset Wilds that Nintendo left out in 8 Deluxe. Mushroom City because it was either this, Wario Coliseum, Bowser's Castle, or Rainbow Road left to be remade. And I put two GCN courses in this prediction. And since Wario Coliseum, Bowser's Castle, and Rainbow Road are all Special Cup courses in Double Dash, while Mushroom City is a Star Cup track, I feel like Nintendo is going to add two Double Dash courses, with Mushroom City being one of them. And 3DS Shy Guy Bizarre, because I feel like it's time for this track to be remade in a newer game. Heck, I read that this track was actually scrapped in the original Mario Kart 8 DLC in favor of GBA Cheese Land and or GBA Ribbon Road. I don't know which one it was supposed to go for. So, I feel like Shy Guy Bizarre needs to have a comeback after being scrapped like that. Now time for my newest predicted cup, the Blooper Cup. The tracks I put down are SNES Mario Circuit 4, GCN Wario Coliseum, GBA Bowser's Castle 4, and Tour Vancouver Velocity. SNES Mario Circuit 4 because it is the only SNES Mario Circuit track to never be remade. Plus, its difficulty with the pipes in Super Mario Kart honestly makes this a good Mario Kart X Retro. GCN Wario Coliseum, due to being a fan favorite and Double Dash that, just like with Toad's Factory, wanted this track to be an 8 Deluxe but never made it to Tour. Plus, it is one of those tracks that has anti-gravity potential, so if this track does return, I would not be surprised if this has anti-gravity included. GBA Bowser's Castle 4 because it is the only GBA Bowser's Castle track to never be remade into a console game. It arrived in Mario Kart Tour at the same time as SNES Bowser Castle 3 in a glow-up, however, unlike the other three GBA Bowser's Castle tracks that came to Tour, GBA Bowser's Castle 4's bomb exploded, causing the castle to be in ruins with a lava fall, just like SNES Bowser Castle 3. Because of this, there was a battle between SNES Bowser Castle 3 and GBA Bowser's Castle 4 to be in the booster course pass, and it ended up being SNES Bowser Castle 3. But I wanted SNES Bowser Castle 3 more anyway. If GBA Bowser's Castle 4 does come to Mario Kart X, I hope it's in its Mario Kart Tour model, and Vancouver Velocity because it was honestly a downer in 8 Deluxe. Why? It was the way it was routed. Vancouver Velocity was routed as Vancouver Velocity 1, 2R, and 3. If it were up to me, it should have been 3, 2R, then 1, just like with Madrid Drive. 
The reason is Vancouver Velocity 1 has an off-road shortcut bigger than the one after laps 2 and 3, even though it doesn't save any time. Also, the suspension bridge in Vancouver Velocity 1 is anti-gravity, and that is something that should have ended Vancouver Velocity. So, if this track gets re-added, I hope Vancouver Velocity gets routed so it is Vancouver Velocity 3, 2R, then 1. And I also had this thought that when we select the track, we might be given what route of Vancouver Velocity or any city track we would like to race on without the need of lap changing, meaning we're just racing on one route the entire race. Time for the granddaddy of retro tracks, the Lightning Cup. I put down Wii Dry Dry Ruins, Tor Piranha Plant Pipeline, Wii U Sunshine Airport, and GBA Rainbow Road. Dry Dry Ruins because out of 9 Wii tracks that appeared in Tor, Dry Dry Ruins fell short, being the only Wii track that never made it to the booster course pass. So I kind of felt bad for it, but yet we still have a ton of Wii tracks in the booster course pass, so like I said, it's Nintendo, what are you going to do about it? Tor Piranha Plant Pipeline because just like with Dry Dry Ruins, it fell short because it is the only known tour track to never be remade in 8 Deluxe. In favor of either We Move You Highway or 3DS Rosalina's Ice World, as those two tracks took up tour nitro slots. So hopefully it gets added to this game. We use Sunshine Airport because it is honestly my favorite Mario Kart 8 slash 8 Deluxe Nitro track. I would love for it to return in Mario Kart X as a Lightning Cup course, because I just love the idea of racing through an airport. Plus, I am hoping that the anti-gravity section is more like anti-gravity than anti-gravity on Hyrule Circuit. Like seriously, this is pathetic use of anti-gravity with the exception of the spin boosters, but all it does is open up a secret ramp, but it's slower than taking the sides. And GBA Rainbow Road because of the system that Nintendo does for each final Lightning Cup track since Mario Kart 7, where a Rainbow Road is a retro based off of game order. Mario Kart 7 has SNES Rainbow Road, and 8 Deluxe, like I said, minus the DLC Rainbow Road, so SNES, 3DS, and Wii Rainbow Roads don't count, had N64 Rainbow Road. I can also see how Nintendo can incorporate GBA Rainbow Road so it isn't as simple as it is in Super Circuit, and hopefully they don't oversimplify GBA Rainbow Road, unlike some others. So there we have it. That is my retro track prediction for Mario Kart X. Just note that I may do an update prediction in the near future, once and or if the game is announced. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see ya.